Hi everybody, welcome back uh, to the channel. Uh, let's see, it's been a couple weeks and again I apologize for not getting something up quicker. I'll explain at the end here. But I uh, thank you all for taking some time to check things out. Here uh, on the channel, for those of you that are new, if you like what you see, subscribe. Um, and if you are just coming back, hit the like button. It'll help by the algorithm. By the way, we, I think we hit a thousand, I think I'm up to about a thousand twenty subscribers. God knows how that happened. But, uh, for those of you who subscribe, thank you. Um, uh, you know, this is not a, this is not a uh, run to see how many people can subscribe. I, I just do this, A, because I don't have a lot to do sometimes. <laughs> I have a lot of records. And I like talking about jazz. I listen to a lot of classical music, too. Um, probably as much as I do jazz, frankly, these days. <clears throat> Excuse me, but at any rate, you know, so everybody's doing their 2023 um, best of videos. Uh, I'm going to make this one a brief one. This is going to be on some of the new um, new stuff that came out this year. Um, so many other people have done this already uh, here in the vinyl community. So I'm not going to be real repetitive. Um, I have seen them. I'll try to add a little bit. Uh, we have some things in common in terms of what we, what we liked that came out this year. And again, like everybody else, this is a personal opinion. Doesn't mean that uh, that I'm I'm right. This is just some of the stuff that I liked. It does happen to coincide with some of the other um, great folks here in the vinyl community that I listen to and watch. Uh, I'm going to post the links to those guys, and I'm going to leave somebody out. Please don't take it the wrong way if I left you out. But there's probably ten or twelve people that I really respect here, and others that I'll probably leave out. But I put links on the bottom here. For those of you who don't uh, access these folks. You should think about it because they they do a great job. Um, I have another video I'm going to do next week. It's going to be a little tougher than this one. This one was rather easy to put together. Um, this is on reissues, stuff that came out this year. So I'm going to do one next week before Christmas on some of the non-reissues, some of the some of the older uh, recordings that I found this year that are musically really amazing and sonically really amazing, but it's a couple. Um, I just acquired uh, a, a collection and there must have been, I'm guessing 15 to 20 um, OJCs from 82 to 85 maybe, and they're in great shape. I've cleaned about half of them, listened to a couple of them and boy, they, they sound great. So I'll be talking about that next week. Maybe it'd be a little more interesting for you than this one, but just hang in. Uh, there'll be a couple surprises in here, and I will have my record of the year, just like last year. Anyhow, let's get to it. Um, seems like, looking at this list that I put together here, this has been the year of Bill Evans. It's been the record uh, year of Kraft Records. Uh, so many things, and I listed, you know, uh, you'll get a list, I'll post this too. You know, kind of my top 10 that I like. And of the top 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of the top 10 for me were, were, were Kraft. Thank you, Kraft. You did a great job. Uh, I understand there's more coming next year. And uh, one, one thing I heard the other day, it's going to surprise you. I'll save that as a surprise if you didn't hear it on one of the other VC uh, channels here. I'm super excited about this. But anyhow, let's get to it. And these are in no particular order. How, how do you rank, you know, it's like ranking your top 10 trumpet players, the top, top 10, you know, tenor player. I mean, there's so many good ones. How, how do you do that? I, I, I see these lists. I actually, saw, I actually saw a trumpet list that had like Herb Alpert, like number 11. Uh, you, I mean, it, 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 behind, I don't really want to get, it, it's horrible. Anyhow, so let's just pull a few out here. Um, yeah, Bill Evans. Boy, there's so many been, uh, good Bill Evans. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. 
you all know the craft recording at the Village Vanguard. You, if you don't, there's been a lot said here about this record. Sonically, it's amazing. Um, you know, uh, done right before LaFaro died in the car accident that put Evans into a kind of a depress, depressed time. But um, that's a must-have, that record. Uh, musically, it's unbelievable, but the, the, the sound, and you know, it all goes to the, these mastering guys, you know, Kevin Gray and Bernie and and uh, and Ryan Smith and and some of the other guys, man, they they can make or break a record, and they we're so fortunate. Um, I did I do have the uh, OJC of that from eighty, I can't remember in the mid eighties, and a lot of the those OJCs sound pretty damn good, but this 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 recording is just amazing. Again, it's been done, uh, it's been talked about by, you know, Chris uh, over in WCB and and the Jazz Bums and many, many other guys that have really dissected that. Not going to be repetitive. Go watch their stuff. Um, it's uh, it's good stuff. Another record, surprisingly, um, it's a contemporary, and it's, I talked about this in the prior video, one or two back, so I'm not going to get into it. This is in my top ten. Um, it's a great recording. It's a great band. And, you know, I love Jack Sheldon, and Jack is on this. Um, but a great job by Kraft and, uh, and, uh, and uh, who did the mastering on this, does it say? Uh, Bernie did this. Well, you know, as you know, Bernie worked for Contemporary back in the day and redid this one, too. So... It's uh, it's amazing. You get more bounce with Curtis Counts. In the late 50s. <laughs> what a provocative color cover. Um, another record that is one of, in my top 10. This is the mono edition. Kevin Gray did this one. Um, Chet Baker, the lyrical trumpet of Chet Baker. You know, Chet is a... Uh, ballad player. I mean, he, he can, he can play fast, like, uh, some of the kind of the post pop guys, but a little bit more laid back. But to me, Chet Baker's a ballad player and nobody interprets ballads on trumpet better than Chet Baker and Jack Sheldon and, you know, one or two others, but man, Chet's right, right on top. And this record is just amazing. This came out on record store day. They may still be around. This is the mono version of this. Um, and it's really good. Really, really good. Um, Kevin, if, you're wa if you happen to watch this, Mr. Gray, you did a great job, as you do on most things. Um, another one of my top ten I'm not going to go into. It's been done. Uh, uh, Ken, uh, I'm going to pronounce Ken's name wrong, Melcap, um, on his channel. I'll link that below. Did a great dissection of this with one of the gentlemen from um, from uh, Kraft um, and talked about this, as did many other people. These are three records, uh, the Full House recordings at Subo in Berkeley, California, of West Montgomery. Um, and uh, again, just knocked it out of the box, the, the, the mastering on this. Um, I'm not going to go into it. You don't have it. Get it. You know, if it's hard to find, I don't know how many they pressed to this. I've got a, my copy's about number 1,000. Um, I do happen to know where there's another copy in a local record store here in Knoxville. If anybody can't find it and you want it, I'll be happy to go buy it for it. It's about 75 bucks. Um, I'll ask you to pay the shipping. I'll buy it. I'll send it to you. Um, if you can't find it, they are getting, I think, a little hard to find these days. I think it's number 995 or something. It's about the same same number of press uses. But I saw it there the other day. I should have probably bought it just to have another copy of it because I think they're going to be very hard to find down the road. Another cu couple of great um, reissues. And again, you know, everybody collects the OGs, you know, and, and that's great if you want the collectibles. But I have to tell you that these reissues, most of the time, most of the time, sound better than the uh, the OGs, OGs in some respects, and they're great. Uh, again, um, another 
another Kevin Gray master of working with Miles Davis. Coltrane, Greg Garland, of course that quintet, Bill Joe and Paul Chambers. Um, amazing, amazing record. Uh, this sounds very much better than the OG. Here's a little bit of a surprise. You know, this is, we all talked about all the Bill Evanses and we'll cover some of these uh, more Bill Evans, but there's a lot of other stuff that came out this year that's a little bit under the radar. Um, this record is amazing. Um, acoustic Sounds, Chad, thank you for finally getting this out this year. I had it in back order for a long time. And of course the, the, the QRP quality and, and just the way Chad does things, it's amazing. It's quiet, the sound is amazing. And I think it's maybe Gene Ammons' best record that I enjoy. Um, just beautiful record, beautiful sounding record. What a what a player, uh, Gene Ammons, boss tenor on prestige. Here's another one that went under the radar. I haven't seen talked about that much in the VC. Um, and I don't know if, how readily available this is, if you could find it, or would suggest picking it up as a tone poet on Blue Note. Um, Wayne Shorter, Schizophrenia, again, Kevin Gray. I don't know how these guys sleep. Every record I see is either Kevin or Bernie or Ryan or one of these mastering geniuses. But that's, I mean, it's amazing. Schizophrenia, Wayne Shorter. It's an interesting band. Um, Curtis Fuller, James Spaulding is on alto and flute, uh, who did some recording with Freddie Hubbard uh, as well on Blue Note. Um, Wayne Shorter, Joe Chambers, Ron Carter, and Herbie Hancock. I talked about this in a previous uh, video, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but Joe Chambers on drums, um, he, I think he, uh, he uh, disappeared rather early in life, unfortunately. But uh, what a what a talented player really drove this band. Ron Carter, Herbie, I would love to have heard those three. And not to knock Tony Woods, I love Tony. Maybe my one of my in my three fav favorite drummers. But boy, Joe Chambers here just played as good as I've ever heard. Um, you know, a, a, a small group drummer play on this record. Great tunes, uh, predominantly all Wayne Shorter tunes. One tune by Spalding, but. Uh, there's a couple ballads and a couple real driving, you know, hard bop tunes on here. Recorded extremely well and mixed extremely well. If you don't have this, please find it. Um, not everything is, you know, I, I was waiting for this record, The Cats. This just came out. I just got it the other day. Um, I waited for it for a long time. It's a craft. You know, how, how can you go wrong? Tommy Flanagan, Coltrane. Kenny Burrell, Henry Solomon um, was born Leonard Graham, no relation. Uh, changed his name uh, when he adopted the Islamic faith. And, um, you know, Tommy Flanagan, this should be under his, his banner because he, he's the predominant player on this and plays great. He like, reminds me a lot of Hank Jones, um, knows when to play, when not to play what to play, what not to play. Uh, Coltrane plays well, as he always does. Kenny Burrell plays well, as he always does. Suleiman, I don't know. Uh, you know, he sounds on here, try, I think he's trying to sound like Clifford and Lee Morgan combined. His ideas are good, but it just doesn't sound like he's, he's, he's on his A game on this record. Um, the sound is good, the recording is, is good. It's an old, uh, old new jazz prestige uh, record with the purple label. This just came out. Um, it's not one of my favorite records, but it's an interesting record musically. Um, I wish that, uh, you know, Sullivan maybe played a little better on this. He, he's kind of the weak link, I think, on this record. I've heard him play in other things, and he's a good player. Um, good days and bad days. And maybe that's why this wasn't uh, around earlier. I have no idea. Another record that ran under the radar, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this wrong. Scolo Hofo, and what it what it's short for, it's short for the players in here, Schofield and 
Blue Moon Isle and, and group. It's a two record set on Blue Note and it came out early this year. So I think, you know, I think this came out maybe in February or January of 2023. And uh, I think because of that, maybe a lot of people have forgotten about this because it's been around, but this did come out this year. And it's really, really a good, good record. Lovano plays really well on this. I think this was recorded in the early 2000s. Um, but great music, great sound, um, a Blue Note tone poet. A lot of good tone poets this year. That Turrentine Mr. Natural, I'd have to put in there as a above average tone poet. Speaking of tone poets, here's a great tone poet. Slow Drag, I talked about this. Uh, some of Donald Byrd's best playing is on here. Um, you know, uh, it, Slow Drag's kind of a slow blues, uh, slow rock and blues. Great recording of Secret Love on here um, and, and other tunes. But Donald Byrd just plays super, super, super well. And it's Billy Higgins is on drums. In fact, Billy Higgins does the vocal. He's credited with the vocal part. He does a little kind of a early, early rap chorus on, on Slow Drag. It's kind of interesting. Billy Higgins, I, I love Billy's playing. They used to call Billy Higgins Smiling Billy because, man, he would just smile. He'd be playing and smiling as he played. Happy guy. Um, great drummer. Um, Cedar Walton's on this. Sonny Red's on this. Uh, another great player. Underrated player. I think uh, next year, every video I do, I have some ideas. I need to write this stuff down. But I think I'm going to do, every video might have an, uh, one underrated player per video. Guys like Sonny Red or, you know, guys that aren't Coltrane and Miles and Chet Baker and Bill Evans that, that, that are just great players that we need to know about. Sonny Red would be in that category. category. And last, a uh, couple of last things, Lee Morgan Infinity, I'm the Tone Poet. Um, again with Billy, uh, Billy Higgins, Reggie Workman, Willis on piano, Larry Willis. McLean, if young Jackie McLean's on this. This was issued, uh, this was done in 65, but I don't think it was issued. I think it was issued in Japan before it came out on Tone Pod. Uh, it might have been reissued on that uh, Blue Note series in the, uh, I guess in the early 80s with the white covers where they did some more of the kind of experimental stuff. You know, Blue Note went into that kind of commercial thing um, for a while back there. Uh, and then, uh, you know, trying to sell records. And in the, uh, in the uh, 70s, and then they issued about 10 records. I know there's a Dexter Gordon, a Larry Young, a whole bunch of stuff with the white covers. I think this was originally done on a, this is the original rec record cover. Um, and again, you know, it's a great sounding record. Again, as always, Kevin Gray, Joe Harley, at uh, at at, uh, at the tone poet Blue Note just did a great job with this. This is a Van Gelder uh, angle with Van Gelder. Um, it's a lot of a lot of talk about which studio people like Van Gelder's in. I, I happen to like the Hackensack stuff better in the living room, much of sounded better. But that's a good video, maybe for another day. Another underrated tone poet that came out this year is, uh, is a Pacific Jazz uh, reissue with Carmel Jones. And this is entitled The Remarkable Carmel Jones. Um, and of course, Harold Land is on here. An early Gary, a young Gary Peacock is on here. Frank Strazeri, good alto player, uh, is on this too. And it's a really good recording, really done, done well. Um, I do have a copy of this. It's not an OG. And it, it, it music's good. Sound is okay. But um, this reissue is really, 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 really good. Again, Mr. Gray. Do you ever sleep, Mr. Gray? So let me just read off a couple other records here. And I'm going to list all this stuff. I, I, if you notice, I left off some of the box sets. There's two box sets that I really like. Of course, uh, Way Out West, another craft, Sonny Rollins. 
uh, extremely well done. Great packaging, quiet vinyl, great, great sounding record of one of the jazz classics of all time um, by Sonny Rollins, Way Out West. And then the package with Eddie Lachlan Davis and Shirley Scott uh, that was done um, on Kraft. Uh, it's called Cooking with Jaws and Queen. It's a four or five disc box of the, of the cooking records um, that they did together. And it's, you know, it's not, it's kind of like just stuff that you can put on at night and read a book and relax and listen to some really, really nice, nice, just great playing. The UHQRs I left out, obviously, you know, <laughs> have you ever heard a really bad UHQR? No, they're all as good as you can do these days. Thank you, thank you, Chad, um, over at the Acoustic Sounds QRP. Um, Steely Dan goes without question. You know, that record may be one of the best sounding vinyl records of all time. It, uh, it's, it is amazing. And of course, Coltrane, my favorite things, or my favorite things, Love Supreme. I hear my favorite things is coming next year. That's, that's, the, that's the talk. Uh, let's see, Kraft, did I leave anything out? Of course, Wall Street Debbie, Village Vanguard, and my record of the year that's coming up here in a minute. Or then there's the contemporary things that were finished up this year, started last year, uh, that Bernie did, um, Bernie Grumman did, Art Pepper meets the rhythm section, uh, a couple other things. My Fair Lady came out, I think, too, this year. Um, what did I leave out? Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Miles Davis working. I got to go back to that just for a second. That, that would be in my, certainly in my top 10. Uh, Monk and Train came out this year. A good record. Um, I don't think it's one of the, compared to this, it's a, it's, it's a great record. But compared to the other stuff, it's maybe a step, maybe just a step down to me. Musically great. And of course, the Woody Shaw. Uh, came out this year, Blackstone Legacy. Interesting, interesting record. Um, as Woody plays great as he always did, I think. Analog Productions this year, I think the, the four that I enjoyed um, was, of course, the Gene Ammons, Boss Tanner. Night Train came out, the uh, Oscar Peterson version of Night Train. Um, very big seller um, on Verve. The Verve series that Chad's doing is amazing. Um, then there was Cannon Bilaterally in Chicago. Um, that was a hard record to find for some reason. I, I don't know if they didn't ship enough or, why, or something, but I did get a copy of it, and it sounds real good, and it is real good. And, of course, the 45 RPM version of Brilliant Corners. Uh, Chris over at WCB just did a giveaway on that. I think, I think is it tonight, the 13th? I think he's going to unveil that tonight um, if I can get this up today. I'll try to get it up this afternoon. Now, uh, the Blue Notes uh, that I've enjoyed this year, Jackie McLean, Blues Nick came out. Herbie Hancock, Imperial Isles was reissued. Shorter Night Dreamer, T the Tina Brooks, True Blue. Anybody have the original on that? <laughs> you do. You, you, you're, you, you're a wealthy guy or gal. Uh, Kenny Burrell, KB Blues. Okay, it's a, to me a three star. Not one of Kenny Burrell's best records, but, you know, I enjoy listening to it. And then some some old uh, stick, old uh, War Horses, or Silver, Blowing the Blues Away, Hank Mobley, No Room for Squares. Sonny Clark Trio, good. Not, not a five-star. And then the Harless, Harless Parlin, Speaking My Piece, not a bad record. Uh, the more I listen to that, the more I like it. Um... Those around the tone post, I leave anything out. Of course, Turrentine, Mr. Natural, get that one if you can. Jack Wilson, Easterly Winds. I just think there's something crazy going on with the with the uh, tapes on that. It just didn't sound as good as some of the other tone posts. Musically, maybe as good as anything. Just to me, it didn't sound that great uh, in playback. And uh, the other two I mentioned. Um, honorable mention, I give uh, to Coherent. Kevin Gray's record company with Kristen Atkins, uh, Shapes and Sound. And then um, 
of course, the two record store days on element, uh, elemental music were really good. Now we get back to Bill Evans. Bill Evans' Treasures, a three LP set, and Bill Evans' Tales from Copenhagen uh, on element. It's a record store records, and I don't know how they are to find, if you can still find them. They're excellent. Again, this is the year of Bill Evans. It was the year of Kraft Records. Speaking of Kraft Records, I'm going to unveil my record of the year. And I ordered this the day it came out, direct from Kraft. I don't know as of today, which is December 12th, 13th. Um, maybe these are shipping from folks like the Ed Groove or Acoustic Sounds or Elusive Disc. Maybe it's shipping. It's only shipping in the last couple of days. I was lucky enough to get a copy about three days ago and have listened to this about five times already. So much so that I bought another copy just in case it's on the way. And it is going to surprise you. It is the Bill Evans, Tony Bennett fantasy record. It is an amazing record, musically and sonically. You can hear Bill breathe on this. You can hear him when he's phrasing. You can hear his voice kind of enunciate his S's and his just a, he's a powerful, was a powerful singer. A lot of people don't know that, you know. Um, I mean, he, 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 he used a microphone, but man, he, he would, it was like Louis Armstrong, you know, when Louis recorded, sometimes they had to put him in the other room. He played so loud and so powerful. And man, does Evan sing on this. I, I'm not a big vocal vocalist fan. I, I have a couple vocalists that I like. I like Tierney Sutton. I wish she'd record something on vinyl. Tierney, if you watch this, vinyl, please. Um, but what a record. Please, everybody, do yourself a favor. Get yourself a copy of this. Again, Kraft, you knocked it out of the box. This is my record of the year. Again, Bill Evans. Bill Evans was the record of my year last uh, record of the year last year for me. Um, you must believe in spring, and he did it again. Okay, a uh, couple other things. Um, just a little bit of news, uh, and I won't take credit for this. I, I know I, I, I I'm not real important here. I wrote Chad Kasem, Kasem an email probably about a year ago, and he started issuing these, reissuing these contemporaries. I don't know if he ever got it. I never got an acknowledgement, which is fine. And I said, Chad, would you please do a box set of the Shelly Man at the Black Hawk? And from what I'm hearing, I don't think it's going to be a box set. But I've heard on another channel that those records, or one or two, or hopefully all four or five, will be issued as reissues with Kraft coming up in 2024. I am super excited for that. I hope it actually happens. Let's see. Okay, so another thing, so I've gotten some emails and some queries as to where I've been. Uh, and I'm a photographer. I teach photo workshops literally around the world. I backed my business off probably by two thirds because I'm 150 years old. <laughs> oh, sorry, 120. And uh, so, you know, I'm slowing down a little bit traveling wise, and I, but I've been, I was gone a lot during the fall. I also developed uh, an autoimmune disease called myasthenia gravis. It's treatable um, once they get the medication under control. It's a, it has to do with your, your, your muscles and being able to control stuff. And some day, sometimes if I get real tired, um, it gets a little tough to do some things for a while until I get some medicine. Um, but it's good. It's a lot better. It's going to be better. They're working on it now. And I think in a month or two, it'll be back. So for those of you who sent me an email, that's what's going on. Um, it is, uh, it, it's a kind of a pain in the neck, literally sometimes, but other than that, uh, life is good. And I have time to listen to some more music. So I'm going to work on this other video. This is going to be tougher. I, I can't do a top 10. I might pull out maybe 15, um, finds 15 purchases 
for 15 or so things that I found last year that to me just made my year in terms of, you know, non-reissue records or non, non, uh, you know, um, recently redone records. I'm sorry to be long here. I'll try to get this out next week. And uh, thank you again for watching. Again, like, subscribe, and uh, it's all good. And if anybody, if you can't find that West Montgomery record, you know, I'll, and you send me an email, I'll take the first email that comes in. I, I can't guarantee if you're the second or the third. I, I'm just literally take the first one. I'll go buy it. Um, and uh, you can send me a check. Um, we'll go back and forth. But I do know where there is one if you can't find a West Montgomery um, at, uh, in uh, Berkeley at Subo Full House Recordings. Uh, you ha got to have that one, folks. Anyhow, have a good one. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.